Hello, this is Bob McClellan. Today I'm going to be looking at how to find answers in OpenXML. The particular example I'm going to use is putting an image where you want it in a spreadsheet, but it really could be any, almost anything at least. Uh, just This is a general technique for how to find out how the OpenXML should look for anything that you want to do. So here we go. So I'm going to start with a empty spreadsheet has nothing in it. This is a brand new spreadsheet that I saved. And I'm going to copy, make a, that's my initial copy, and then I'm going to go back in here and add my image. And so let's put it at D4. No, we don't want to do D4 because I want to tell the difference between row and column. So let's make it C4. I'm going to insert a picture. And there, there I am. Well, I'm way too big. I'm going to make that smaller. All right, and then I'll save it. And I can close this. And the next thing I want to do is find out, okay, what changed. So I can go to the OpenXML productivity tool. And I will find my documents. And we'll check from the original to the new one. And it'll show us what's changed. <coughs> so I can see that there's a drawing and uh, some changes to the sheet and the workbook. So let's just go through them. The core shouldn't be much of anything. That's just a modification timestamp, so we can ignore that. That's all that's there. We'll go back to the package. Let's look at the workbook. And so let's see what happened here. I'll make this bigger. Uh, looks like there was just a change in the width, uh, probably just because I'm using a different resolu screen resolution for this video, so we'll ignore that. And we'll go to the sheet. This is going to be the good one. I'll make this panel smaller so I can see a little more. All right, so uh, there's a selection, but that's not important. That just says, shows which cell was selected after I was done. And then there's this drawing. I think it's interesting to see right off that the drawing is the only change. In other words, there's no actual cell information, just an addition of a drawing into the sheet. So let's look at the drawing. That would be right here. Uh, let's see. It's not going to show me a, a difference here. So the only new thing is this drawing 1XML. So in order to take a good look at that, I'm going to go into Visual Studio and use the tool there. And here's my drawing. There's some other things we can see in here also. Uh, let me go back to that comparison. Yeah. Oh, it does show it here. Here's the addition of the the JPEG right there. So um, I'm going to look at the rest of it over in this other. So here is the drawing information. And there's, you know, we'll go through this step by step and see what's there. I want to go back here for a minute, though. See, there's also this, when, when it has a link like this, that means that this is a part uh, that was created for this drawing. And I can find it. It's right there. And if I wanted to edit it, it would show me that same image. But notice that it's completely copied into the file here because of the way we inserted it. So going back to the drawing, all right, there's a lot going on here. And I could find out what every property does. But I'm going to just kind of glance through for what I think will matter to me. And I see that 
there's a from and a to, and a column and a row and offsets. And th there's my column two, row three. That fits with. Uh, let's see if I can get it open here. Nope, it uh, says it's been editing, but that's not surprising. So f going back and forth between these two, I have column two, row three. What is that like? One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that tells me that this is what I would call zero-based, where the first row and column are zero. So that gives me zero, one, two is my column. And zero, one, two, three is my row. All right. And then it goes to column row, I'm uh, sorry, column four, row 13 with offsets. So if I look, I can see that it doesn't line up exactly with the column. It looks pretty close on the row. And 13 would be the next one. So, you know, this is uh, a little trickier to understand. But now let's look at the rest of it. So then we have a picture. I have an ID of 2. And I'm going to guess if I go back over here and look at my properties here. Oh, no, that's showing me RID1. And that's the image. Okay, so let's look back for RID1, because that should be in there somewhere. There it is. It's on my blip. So that ID is probably this ID up here on the uh, CNVPR is probably an arbitrarily assigned ID, but I'm going to check all this. I'm just getting an overview right now. And then everything else, I see uh, an offset and an extent. That's probably going to determine the size. So I need to know what those units are. Okay, so let's take a look at what some of these are. I'm going to start with the CNVPR ID. So I'm going to go to the standard. I'm thinking it's going to be in drawing. But yeah, let's look at... Well, I'll do this the fast way, is so I'll just search for that. CNVPR. And this can take a while sometimes. It's a very big document. I think I'll try and find the actual item. Here we go. Non-visual drawing properties. Does not affect the appearance. Let's see what ID is. ID is a unique identifier for the current drawing ML object within the current document. Oh, so it's just to be able to locate it and be referred to by other parts, which will not be important for this example. So we can really, especially if you're adding it to a brand new spreadsheet, you can make it whatever you want. Otherwise, you could try and search through to find all of those parts and get the make sure you use a higher ID than exists right there. So that tells us what that is. Now let's look at this. SPPR X form offset extent. So I'm going to see if I can get there. It's part of, it's under pick. I'm going to show you how to get to this uh, indirectly. So I can look at the parent in the pick. PR. All right, so that's the parent that I was looking at, and then that that parent is pick, and I can go the other way. You can link right through in this document. I'm going to look for the shape properties. I think it was, yep. 
so we'll go to Shape Properties, and under Shape Properties, the X Form. That's right here. And this element represents 2D transforms for ordinary shapes. Okay, so that probably is showing my resize and position. Oh, here we go. Offset, extent. This is the location. And then we get to see what are these coordinates? We have an X and a Y. The origin point specified by the parent, which was, I believe, here with the from and to. So why are we getting these other offset and extent values. Let's go back. Extent. CX and CY. Uh, here it says they're in EMUs. English metric units. Alright, so that means Either you're going to have to do a real search in through about what an English metric unit is, which I don't know what it is, or you can do it kind of trial by error, putting images in, seeing what sizes they are, getting it arranged to be the way you want. But at this point, we have a pretty good idea of how this image is going to get put in there. We know there's that this position, the starting position is easy enough to come by. What I'm wondering about is how would you calculate these offsets? And, and sometimes I don't really want to do that. So I'll just try and see what happens if I just make them zero anyway. So what would happen to this document if they were zero? And I will, now I'm going to change the formatting when I save this, but that won't matter. So I'm going to save that. It's being used by someone else. I still have it open somewhere. Oh, in here. Just to be sure, i get it completely saved. Now we'll go back and see what happens. And there you go. See, it has actually brought it into the edges of those cells. So that is important. I'm not sure that that other part is important at all. Uh, these transforms down here. But let's see. I'm going to close this. Put it back the way it was. And I want to compare these numbers. Columns would be x values. I'm just looking at this uh, and that y value. Notice that this ends. 2, 0, that one ends 2, 0, this one ends 9, 1, that one ends with 9, 1. That means that, uh, to me, that means it's likely that the rows and columns are some very even amount, and so this is the ex extra offset there. So this is the complex part of the image. If you can manage to uh, make your image match the cells, it's obviously much easier. But let me look at, uh, one more time at the these EMUs. I'm going to follow this type and see what 
it says. A simple positive length in EMUs That doesn't help us much. This is the actual schema definition of the with the units in it. Okay, sensitive. A lot of stuff using EMUs with no explanation. Here we go. All right. The EMU is the unit measurement. It's defined as follows. All right. So there's your calculation. So now you know, based on how many inches or centimeters you want to use, that will be your conversion factor. So let's take a look at this document again. Let's see if I can... I'm not going to go through this, but... Oh, and we still have that. I haven't sa saved the reversal of that change. Yeah, there would be a whole process I would have to go through to calculate this, which I'm not going to do right now. But I, you know, you've that's this shows how you can take the comparison tool to make sure you can see what's different, look for the important values, find the information in the specification, and that gives you the whole picture of what you need to put this together. Uh, the only other part I'm not going to talk about right now was storing an image part, but it's just a matter of writing the bytes into the uh, appropriate part. Uh, you can I think there was code in the answer to this question about that, and these are good questions. You know, if you don't can't figure out how to write a binary image into a part, then someone will be happy to post that for you. Uh, <clears throat> so that's all the pieces. Once you you know you can get the uh, this RID uh, the and ID in it comes from the part. You can do, just get the part ID. Uh, I'm not going to do the code for this unless there's a huge response to this saying, "Well, please show us the code." And I guess I would sit down and actually create it. But this really shows you what you need to do. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, elements to create here, but they're, most of them are don't have any values to them or have simple default values. So it really is not maybe as involved as you might think it is to create this. So I uh, hope that gives you some idea about how to get, answer your own questions just by using the tools that are available for the OpenXML.